Elvis Presley hits music charts for the very first time with his hit, Heartbreak Hotel. Videotape is first demonstrated at a convention in Chicago by Ampex. The year is 1956, and this top-of-the-line star chief could be had at your local Pontiac showroom. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive community. And I say it's a community because you guys bring stories, memories in the comment section that the internet doesn't know. The internet doesn't know everything. We cover the classics vintage some exotics we love the orphan cars and cars that are being forgotten we talk specs history and design of these rolling works of art if that sounds like a channel nay if that sounds like a community that you would love to join subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video this 1956 pontiac star chief is currently for sale at classic auto mall located morgantown pennsylvania with over 870 cars for sale when recording this episode anybody can go there there isn't an entry fee to get in or out of that place and honestly it's the best way to spend a rainy day for more information pricing and pictures pertaining to this very car be sure to click the link below after this show 1956 pontiac could be had in 15 models across three model lines two different wheelbase options in the basement was the chieftain 860 riding a wheelbase of 122 inches followed by the chieftain 870 which also rode a wheelbase of 122 inches they also offered wagons, which also rode the 122-inch wheelbase. Star Chief was at the top, riding a wheelbase of 124 inches. Pontiac would offer the Star Chief from 1954 to 1966 in six generations. 1956 falls in the second generation, which had a production run from 1955, 56, and 57, built on the GM A-Body platform. Clearing up some confusion, Pontiac also offered the Catalina, which was their speak for hardtop during this period in time. So anytime that you see Catalina, that means hardtop. 56 has been slightly redesigned. So let's compare 55 on top, 56 on the bottom, starting in the front. Same overall shape, but just look at how different these two are. The bumpers are completely different. Turn signals are located inside both bumpers, but designed differently hood mascot and or ornaments differ between these two models moving on to the side profile both of these cars are two-toned but the way that they're two-toned is very different 55 the roof and trunk deck lid are a different color than the overall body whereas the 55 the front of the car is one color the roof is the same color as the front generally, and then the rest of it is a different color. Very interesting. The molding is completely different between these two cars. Take a quick gander at the door handle situation. On the 55, it has door handle pads, or that's what I'm calling them for a lack of a better term, whereas the 56 doesn't have those. Moving your attention to the 56 rear spear, the 55 does not have that. Moving to the rear and rear quarter section, pretend the sedan is a hard top. Also, the top picture is flipped. Both have gas filler doors on the left side and or driver's side. At this angle, just look at how different the two-toning is as well as the molding differences. 56 has different brake lights. The bumpers look the same except for the exhaust port on the 56. Trunk deck lid decorations are different between these two. Moving inside to take a look at the dash, they are very similar, if not the same. The only difference is the 56 is two-tone, whereas... The 55 is all one color. Which do you like better in the comment section below? Let's talk specs. 212 inches long, 75.1 inches wide, 60 and a half inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 124 inches. It weighs 3,760 pounds. Price, $2,525, which is equivalent to you spending $28,377.57 in the year 2023. Total 1956 Pontiac production 
was 405,730 units, of which total Star Chief was 127,335 units. And of that number, four-door Catalina Hardtop was 48,035 units. Moving on to engine, side note, every year that this car was made, they offered a different engine. So in 55, it was a different engine than 56, and 56 is a different engine than 57, just so you know. 316.6 cubic inch displacement, overhead valve V8 5.2 liters. It's good for 227 horsepower when equipped with a three-speed manual, 205 horsepower when equipped with the automatic transmission. The power was made at 4,800 RPM, 315 pound-feet of torque at 2,400 RPM with a bore of 3.9 inches and a stroke of 3.3 inches. Compression is 7.9 to 1, five main bearings built of cast iron. When backed with a three-speed manual transmission, zero to 60 could be had in 10 seconds with a theoretical top speed of 110 miles per hour. Average fuel consumption is anywhere around 12.4 miles to the gallon. And these are all baseline numbers, just a jumping off point. You could get worse than this. You could get better than this. Two transmissions on offer, three-speed manual or the automatic dual range hydromatic, which was a four-speed automatic transmission. Let's talk chassis, body on frame construction, rigid, X-frame, four-way cantilever construction. Front suspension consisted of independent front suspension with coil springs, vertical king pins, front stabilizer bar, hydraulic shock absorbers, rear suspension, parallel leaf springs, brakes, 12-inch front drum brakes, whereas the rear used 11 inches. Steering, recirculating ball, 25 to 1. Turning circle, 42 feet. Hotchkiss drive. Let's talk styling. There is a lot, and that is an understatement. There is a lot going on with this front end. You know, turn signals and or marker lights that are recessed back inside this bumper itself. Also, look at this, how it protrudes outwards like a side fin. Just look at the layers in the side profile of this bumper. That's incredible. Also, look at the bodywork here that has this molded out so the bumper can fit. And then it has this part here that kind of overrides it. That's cool. Over here, there's just so many lines and points and edges, and there's just a lot to take in. We'll start up here with this headlight. Just look at how massive these bezels are. Absolutely huge. And that headlight is recessed inside this bezel. Then there's this fake scoop looking thing on the top of the headlight. Coming down here, it's got like these almost like these Dagmars. Just look at all this textured effect. Nice Pontiac script here on the nose. Looking top down, just look at how all of the bright work works together. It's a relatively smooth hood design aside from this textured effect here there is an ever so slight center crease that goes up to the hood ornament that's it. it disappears after that coming down the side just look at this profile I wonder if this ever gets caught on the wheel, when the wheel turns, it looks like that would be really close. The wheel well is flared. Also just also notice, also just notice this stainless piece here and the spear and the eight check mark. Down here, these are called curve feelers. So if you get close to a curve, you'll be able to hear it in the inside. 
Look at how it flares down here at the rocker. Has this nice trim piece that runs the belt line of the car. Just check out this line here. Notice it only goes to the rear door and there's this empty space and then more bright work picks up. Just check out the door lines. This car does not have fender skirts, but just look at how much coverage this has. I love this layered panel. Just look at that. Gorgeous. This car has fins and they're textured back here. Look at the rear brake lights. Look how they have like little hoods. Backup lights, how the bumpers are designed, how they wrap back around. Exhaust ports. These look like they're inside the bumper and it's just this like little mounted exhaust port. I don't know if I don't know if it's connected or not. It looks like it's just mounted to the bumper, but it might be part of the bumper itself. How this goes over top of the license plate. Pontiac with nice stars. Gas filler door is on the left hand side, driver's side, correct side. And notice it has a lock. Just look at all of the different contours, all of the different lines and shapes. This car is pretty much smooth everywhere, but it's a very, very curvaceous car this is. The mirrors are mounted adjacent to, I guess you would call this the A-pillar. Wraparound windshield, of course, mounted right here. Just look at all the stainless. Wipers are stainless. Stainless, everything stainless. And if I'm wrong, somebody will correct me in the comment section, I'm sure. This one has drip rails that run the whole length of the car. Also just notice how, notice this, look at how small it is here. And as it goes, it gets wider and wider and wider until it gets to this point here. And then it shrinks again. Nice wraparound back glass. Getting inside. So notice this car is a four-door hardtop, meaning it does not have a door frame. This is what the uh, door panel looks like. It's got an armrest here, door lock. Just take a look at all of the different designs and materials used. I believe it's all vinyl, but this is like a textured vinyl up here. I love the bright bars that separate color and pattern designs. This armrest looks very Chrysler-like in the way that it protrudes outward. I love these two bright bars and how they come together right here with a Pontiac star. Door handle to get out, window crank for the vent window, and it has a lock feature, so just make sure it's unlocked. Operates like that. This is the window crank for the big window, and it operates like this. And just notice it's all trimmed out. Just look how thick this trim is, finger for reference. Coming down inside the pedal box itself, high beam switch, brake pedal, gas pedal, handbrake and or emergency brake and a light to tell you whether or not it's on because sometimes when you're sitting up there you can't tell take a look at this interior here's what over the hood looks like here's what first person over the hood looks like i love it in here i love the wraparound windshield the visibility is great underneath the steering wheel there is tons of room between my lap and the steering wheel the reason i show that is because 
if you don't fit in the car and you have your steering wheel in the crotch, it's not a comfortable driving experience. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right, sharing the same gauge, amp meter at the top, coolant temperature at the bottom, headlights, windshield wipers, heat. Notice the off is in the top position, followed by low, medium, high. The lever that controls it is at the bottom of the dash. Speedometer with odometer flanked by turn signal indicators. Blower motor right below that. De-icer, which the lever is on the bottom of the dashboard, similar to the temperature lever. Gasoline gauge, oil pressure, drive modes read, park, neutral, drive, low, reverse, lighter, radio, ashtray, clock. Up above, there are sun visors, and there's my hand for reference. They are, they are big sun visors. There is a nice rear view mirror in this one, a fuzzy dice, Pink Panther edition. Over here, another sun visor. This is what I look like sitting in the front seat of the Pontiac Star Chief. I got tons, tons of headroom, and I, I realized that people wore hats back in the day. The, there's lots of headspace. This car does not feel claustrophobic. The seat profile itself is a rather nice seat profile. It's slightly reclined. The bench does not dip down in the back. It's a really nice size bench. As far as my knees, my knees are nowhere near the dashboard. This is just like any other car. On to the glove box test. Here is our test subject. Here is my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. And it's weird, it's like it's like in the middle of the car. But look at how absolutely massive that glove box is. And that's exactly why we do these tests, because you would never know that you could fit something this big in a space that's seemingly small. And it shuts. So this car does not have a cow air vent, but it does have two vents down inside the footwells. There's one over here and there's one over here. The one on the driver's side is controlled with this lever and the one on the passenger side is controlled with this lever. And that allows cold air to come in from outside down at your feet to get the heat from the firewall off your feet. Most people don't like four-door cars, but man, just look at how sexy this four-door is. And you couldn't tell that this is a four-door from far away. No post. This is a four-door hardtop, the coolest four-doors ever made. And just look at how this operates. I always wondered this, what do the doors connect to? Because there is no pillar, there's no post. The post only comes up halfway and it's super, super rigid. It doesn't, doesn't move or flex or anything. And I'm just gonna back up so you can see what this looks like with the two doors open. It looks kind of alien compared to what we're used to, but man, that is so cool. So just check out this rear door where the wheel well is cut out there. Has way more textured effect vinyl back here. Bright work, different designs. Armrest is in a different place. This is the door handle to get out window crank for the big window and it operates like this. Look at how cool that is. It doesn't go straight up and it's all trimmed out. Look at how much space there is back here in the rear. Nice quality shot. Here is what the front looks like from the rear. Let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio. This is what it looks like out the rear from the back seat. Nice big parcel shelf back there. Look at all of the ribbing. That is a really, really nice feature. Also check out all the bright work on the sides over here. 
coat hook, light. Everything that is found on the driver's side is also found on the passenger side. Coat hook, light. Look at this seat profile. It reclines even more back here than it does in the front. The bench, I think, is in a perfect position. It's not too big. It's not too small. It doesn't dip down in the back. This is a very comfortable seating position back here. My knees are right here. There's enough space to put my fingers in between my knees and the front seat. This car did have a robe rail or a rail in which to have hang a heavy blanket ashtray coming to the under the hood section the hood release is right up underneath here right here and there's only one release it's all one motion it has dual horns here in the front this one's fitted with an electric fan in front of the radiator look at how this engine is placed in here also notice there's lots of space generator oil bath air cleaner the sound that that dipstick made when it came out it almost sounded like a sword Power steering, batteries up here. On the positive side, try five Chevy without physically being a Chevy. Great visibility, spacious, both front and rear. Huge glove box in the center, which is easy to reach from anywhere in the front seat. Against it, rust prone. Special molding may be hard to find. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. First scenario, money, no object. Would you rather have a 1956 Chevy four-door hardtop or a 1956 Pontiac four-door hardtop or 1956 Oldsmobile four-door hardtop? I'm gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario. Would you rather have a 1955 Pontiac Star Chief or a 1956 Pontiac Star Chief or 1957 Pontiac Star Chief? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Moving on to name that tune. First person to get both the name of the band and song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. What a groovy song that is. Anyway, thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. I call it the After Party. Gives you the opportunity to share your rides, stories, anything cool that you find on the internet that's car related. If you don't have Facebook and would like to reach me, maybe you have a car in your personal collection and you'd like it featured on the channel, my email is also linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, toodaloo!